Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how you can run a structural equation model in M plus from a path diagram. In case you are new to this channel, on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation models or other models with latent variables in the M plus software. If, if this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then pl please hit the like button and leave a comment in the comment section in case you have a comment. So in this video, I want to show you how you can conveniently get M plus to generate the syntax for you for running a structural equation model or related model so that you don't have to type the syntax yourself. This is useful mostly when you are new to the software and not yet familiar with the syntax. Later on you'll see that it's much easier to just type the few commands that are necessary for most models rather than drawing a path diagram. But when you're new, when you're brand new to M+, then this can be very helpful to get, the, uh, get to know the program better and um, to see how the syntax works. And it's actually quite convenient. So let me show you how this works. You can see I already opened my M plus program. You can follow along with a free M plus demo version or with a full version of the software if you have it. So you just launch M plus and then you get this empty window. And so what you can do now is you can click here on diagram and then say open diagrammer. And then magically you get two windows and you can see on the left is still an empty window that's called M plus diagram one. And on the right hand side you have an input file, a file that's called M plus input one. And you can see you already have some syntax commands in here that M plus generated for you. You have a title command where you can enter the title of the analysis. For example, you could write um, my first structural equation model with, uh, with M plus. And then a few things that you have to enter here as well is you have to enter the data file name and you can see that M plus put a comment here, uh, enter the name of the data set. So whatever uh, is typed behind an exclamation mark is a comment in M plus and is ignored by the program and so M plus here um, notifies us that the data file name needs to be provided otherwise M plus wouldn't know to which data set the model should be fit. So in this case my data file is called data dot dat and I'll show you later that when you save that uh, input file that we're going to generate here in the same folder in which you have that data set, then M plus will automatically find it and will run your analysis correctly. So later on, we'll save this input file in the folder in which I also have that data set, that data file called data.dat. Furthermore, M plus also tells us that we need to provide the names of the variables that are in this data set. In this case, I have four variables in this data set and I will just simply call them y1 through y4. I can use the hyphen to indicate that I have four variables, that the first one is y1, the second one is y2, the third one is y3, and the last one is y4. So that's convenient when you have many variables in a data set that all have um, some uh, the same name but um, different item numbers or something like that so then you don't have to type item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4 and so on you can just say item 1 through item 4 or something like that and then you can also see that we have a model command here in the syntax already and so now we could type the syntax for our structural equation model here as well if we knew the commands however if you don't know the commands then one way to do this is to go over to the M plus diagram window here, click into the window so that the little icons here at the top are being activated. And so I'm gonna move myself over here so you can see better. And so one thing that we can select here, for example, is a factor model. So this would be a measurement model or part of the measurement model with a factor and multiple indicators if we wanted to generate a structural equation model with multiple indicators of a latent variable. So when I click on that, then this is activated. And then when I click into the empty window, 
then M plus will ask me how many observed variables are going to be on that factor. So in this case, I have a two-factor model and each factor has two indicators for this example. So I'm going to type in two and then OK. Next, M plus asks me whether um, we want to use default variable names generated by M plus or whether we want to select the variable names. Typically, you would want to select the names so that they're in line with your variable list and that you can pick the factor name that you want. So we could call this, for example, F1, this factor, and then OK. And then next, we have to enter the names of the indicators or observed variables that are in our names list here. So in this example, the variables Y1 and Y2 measure factor F1. So I'm type, typing Y1 space and then Y2 and then OK. And then M plus generates my measurement model on the left hand side. You can see this is the factor F1 with two indicators Y1 and Y2 and residual terms or error terms here um, at the top. And you can also see that on the right hand side in the syntax, there is now already a line of code also in the model statement, which reads F1 by Y1, Y2, semicolon. So M plus generated the syntax for us for this factor measurement model and the by statement here means F1 is measured by Y1 and Y2. Next is our second factor. So we click one more time into this diagram window. This icon here is still active with the factor. So and plus we'll do the same thing again when I click again into this diagram window and it'll ask me first how many observed variables are going to be on this factor. And again, we have two variables on the second factor. Okay, and then again, we want to enter the variable names manually. The factor name of the second factor may be F2. Okay, and then Y3 and Y4 are my indicators for the factor F2. So I'm entering Y3 and Y4 here, then OK. And here it is, my second factor. And you can see that also on the right hand side, a second line of code in the model statement has been added that says F2 by Y3, Y4. Now, in this case, I want to estimate a latent regression model, a structural equation model where F1 predicts F2 or where F2, we could say, is regressed on F1 in a linear regression model. And so this we can um, indicate in the path diagram by clicking on this single headed arrow here that says draw path. If you wanted to simply run a confirmatory factor model with a correlation between the factors, you would pick the double-headed arrow here that says draw covariance. But in this case, it's a regression model, so we're going to take the single-headed arrow here. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to click on F1. F1 is the factor that predicts F2. And so then we're going to move the arrow. We're going to keep the... Um, mouse pressed and then we're going to click again on F2 and so now F2 is predicted by F1 and that's reflected in the syntax by this additional statement that says F2 on F1. Now notice that or first of all this means that F2 is being regressed on F1 in a linear regression model so it's a latent regression model. Now notice that there's no residual term here in the path diagram at this point. However, M plus will automatically estimate a residual variance for F2. There, so there's nothing that you have to do. You don't have to manually add a residual term here for F2 to indicate that there might be some residual variance in F2 that is not explained by F1, which is standard. Typically, we can't explain 100% of the variance in a dependent variable. Even when we use latent variables, there will be a residual variance. And so that's impo it's important to know that in M+, plus, this is assumed to be the case by default. So M+, plus will automatically generate a 
the residual variance for F2 as a parameter, even though we're not saying anything in the syntax or in the path diagram about that residual term. Now, if you didn't want a residual term, then you would have to say something in M+, and you would have to add a command in your model statement that says that F2 at 0, so indicating that the residual variance for F2 shouldn't be estimated. If you don't say anything, then the F2 residual variance will automatically be estimated as a parameter by M+. Plus. And so this is all we have to do for this latent regression model. Now we can go back uh, to the syntax. We can click into that syntax window, and when you click back into that uh, syntax window on the right-hand side, then this blue icon here gets activated, the Run button, and so we can now hit the Run button to get the results for this model. When we do that, then M-plus asks us whether we want to save the syntax file. And of course, we do want to save the syntax file, so we can refer to it later. So we click on Yes, and then I can save it um, under whatever name and whichever, fac and whichever folder I want to. Here I'm going to save it into the specific folder in which I also have my data set. You can't see, see this data file right now, but you can trust me that it's in the same folder so that M plus will find this data set data dot dat. So I'm going to save this input file and then M plus will run the model and then if everything goes well you get an output where you um, can see that the input reading terminated normally, you don't get any error message so that's a good sign and on the left hand side you can see that um, or we can click on that then we see the full diagram you can see that now all the estimates have been imported into this um, path diagram and notice that those are the unstandardized parameter estimates. So those are the ones that you get by default. Notice also that there is a residual variance estimate here for F2 even though we didn't specifically request that. So that is given by default as I mentioned earlier. And then also notice that we have parameter estimates first and then standard errors in parentheses. Some uh, some of the parameters here do not have standard errors, and that's because they are fixed. By default in M+, the first loading on a factor is always fixed to 1 for identification. So you can see why 1 has a loading of 1.0 on F1, and so therefore has no standard error, because this loading is fixed and not estimated. And the same for Y3 on the second factor. All the other parameters are freely estimated and therefore have standard errors here as well. Now, this is what you get by default. You also get the output with fit statistics and um, other information that I don't want to go into the details about here, but notice that you only get the unstandardized solution by default. If you also wanted standardized parameter estimates in M+, you would have to go back to your syntax and you add an additional command that is called output colon, and then you specify stdyx, semicolon, and then you also get the completely standardized solution. So output, colon, stdyx, semicolon, and then you rerun your syntax, and then you get also the standardized parameter estimates. And those you could also show here in the diagram if you ask for them. Then this would be activated here, stdyx estimates, and then you could also um, put those into the diagram. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about M plus and how the diagrammer can be used here to generate the syntax for a model. Again, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this video. And if you have any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comment section. And I'll see you next time.